Since its manufacture in the 1980s, the AFM, Atomic Force Microscope, has become indispensable to nanotechnology work. While light microscopes cannot resolve objects smaller than half the length of a, white, of a light wave, the AFM resolves this problem, which scientists term the Raleigh limit, by using a probe to map the topology of the object being imaged. So the point here is that uh, you can actually image objects that are smaller than half the length of a light wave uh, by dispensing with light microscopy altogether. In 2004, Jimchevsky intended to record the movement of cardiomyocytes, which are heart muscle cells that beat in culture. Atomic force microscopy had already been used for probing the surface of E. coli and imaging biomolecular reactions as they occur. The heart muscle cells were sent to him by Carlo Ventura, a Sardinian medical researcher he had met at a conference in 2001. Jimchevsky's cells were scheduled to arrive from Sardinia on September 11th, 2001. But in the heightened state of national security on 9-11, the cells were deemed a potential threat and were seized by customs. Frustrated and impatient to begin his work with the AFM, Jimchevsky borrowed a yeast culture from colleagues who were in a nearby UCLA lab down the hall. And when he put them under the AFM, he was surprised to discover that yeast vibrate with a regular periodicity. Though both AFM and STM are examples of a broader category of microscopy that nanotechnologists call scanning probe microscopy, the techniques by which each microscope interfaces with a sample are quite different. Unlike STM, which operates in this tunneling mode that I described earlier, um, in AFM, probes come much closer to sample surfaces. Uh, and this is a technique that researchers call contact mode. Members of Jimchevsky's lab compare AFM reading the topology of a microscopic surface to a, uh, to a blind person running his finger over a line of braille. Borrowing Thomas Kuhn's phrasing, Jimchevsky called the shift from light microscopy to probe microscopy a major paradigm shift. Rather than using lenses and waves, they were recording by feeling. And uh, just to explain the difference between uh, scanning tunneling microscopy and atomic force microscopy, uh, like I said, here the probe is coming much closer to the surface of the sample, and it's actually running in raster fashion over the sample. Uh, and what that means is it's deflected depending on um, the topography of the nanoscopic surface. As the tip is deflected, uh, that mechanical motion is converted either by a laser or by uh, what's called a piezoelectric crystal uh, and is converted into electrical current, uh, which is then used to map the surface. Uh, so that's the difference between the two techniques. Um, most basically, the AFM is much, much closer to the, the uh, sample surface. So as a tiny cantilever, and this, the tip is less than 10, 10 nanometers wide, is displaced, this piezoelectric crystal converts the nanomechanical motion into voltage, which then creates this, this map of the surface. But the difference that Jimchevsky uh, made was instead of dragging the probe over the surface of the sample, he and his graduate student, whose name was Andrew Pelling, uh, held the AFM probe stationary on the surface of the yeast cell so that the oscillations of the cell wall could themselves be traced. And this is the technique that Jimchevsky named sonocytology, which he compares to using your finger to feel a pulse. Yeast cells are about five microns in length, and they have walls that are much more rigid than most mammalian cells, which makes it easier to rest a microscopic probe on their surfaces in order to detect cellular vibrations. Uh, so most eukaryotic cells are, are much softer than that. Jimchevsky discovered that yeast cells vibrated rhythmically and that the periodicity of the vibration was within the range of human hearing. Using a freeware program he had downloaded from the internet, he converted the vibrations that he had recorded with the AFM into a sound file. And the resulting sound uh, was something like this.
that goes on for much longer. 